In this video, we'll show you why I love 1e4. Three games, three different openings, and I will explain every single move. Enjoy! Let's go. First game, I play e4. My, my opening. Okay, we are in e45. I will play knight out, and I will start with the Italian game. As always, in the opening, it's important to develop the pieces. Now, my opponent is protecting this pawn with a pawn, meaning that they are not going with the knight here, which would also be guarding the square, so I exploit the situation, and I try to go for the center. Now, I'm attacking this pawn one more time, so usually they just capture, and then I can take with the knight. I have a nice knight at the center of the board. Okay, so... This is very simple. In chess, you have to count when there is a piece that is under attack. You have to count the attackers and the defenders. In this case, there is two attack. There are two attackers and one defender, so we win a free pawn. I call those free cheese macaroni. It's true that at the end of the game, well, at the end of the all the trades, this pawn is also going to be hanging. Maybe my opponent has the plan to take it exactly now. But this is a risky approach because, okay, I could maybe just develop my pieces, you know? I will go with the bishop here and I have a plan in mind. I could give a double threat. I could play queen d5, threatening to give checkmate and threatening to take the knight. And I think we go for this. Bing, bada bam. Queen d5, move six. This move is so strong. There is one move that is kind of saving both, at least for one move, and it's knight g5, because it is also protecting the maid. But now, okay, the bishop is protecting the knight, but nobody's protecting the king. Game two. e4, controlling the center. And b5 is what my opponent is playing. You're crazy. This is a free pawn, we take it. <laughs> I have no idea what this opening is. What are they doing? Okay, we will develop a knight, right? Protecting this bishop. Now we could even push this. And where is this knight going? The only piece that had the brave idea to go out of the starting square might have to go back in the starting square. <laughs> because the knight cannot go here, cannot go here because there is the knight, cannot go here, there because there is the queen. So it has to go back. Okay, now I will go for the center open up the center. I was thinking about queen f3 attacking the rook, but there is knight here. After queen there, knight here, take takes. I win another pawn. I could win up to three pawns. Well, now I will play this move. I'm attacking a rook and I'm going to take this rook. Okay, you take there, I take here. Thank you. I took a rook. There is a bishop under attack, a pawn under attack. This was the most horrible game <laughs> opening. Because my opponent really played a terrible opening. This is why... How you pun... Ooh. How <laughs> you not punish bad openings. Oh, wait. Wait a second. Oh, no, my rook. Oh, no, my rook. <laughs> oh, no, my rook. I lost the rook. It's crazy that this is still completely lost for black. Because all these pieces are still in the starting squares. And whoa. This seems unbelievable. I will take here. Okay, and now I develop my knight. And I have a very nice plan. If this rook is captured... Bang. I'm controlling this square. Threatening mate. Uh, what? It's not mate, but they have to give away the queen. I thought that was a simple idea. I am attacking the knight and threatening mate. They try to survive. I'll give a check. And then bring my bishop to attack this knight. There we go. That's the threat, guys. I'll go to take that. Queen is back. Sorry, qu queen is, was under attack. The bishop was attacking the queen, but I can go with... Ooh, ooh. Attacking my knight. How dare you? I'll go back here. This is still very powerful. Okay, they did a good job. They defended quite well. But still, those pieces are not having a fun time. Attacking the knight. And GG's. When the knight moves here, I then give a check and take this knight, and then it's over. So it's fun that in this position, queen f3 is the best move. And I calculated this, that, and then I was not so happy of winning three pawns. I wanted more than that. <laughs> and so I didn't play this line that I saw. And I'd rather play d4 to try to attack the center. After bishop a6, what I have to play is to take here. And once the knight takes, boom, go for the center. And now controlling all these squares, I'm going to simply develop my pieces out. And this is so painful for black to find just some normal moves. 
already, for example, d6 nearly loses to this move. I mean, you take there, but see, the king is nearly made it. I have this, that. Doesn't look good. Okay, there is knight f6, of course. Maybe g6, bishop out. This is how you can develop your pieces. But can somebody tell me why to play this opening? Hmm. New game, we play e4. Wow, we are playing against the modern defense. Every time your opponent is not controlling any of the central squares, you exploit it and you go with the two pawns very strong in the middle of the board. Now you could, in this type of positions, you could go with a perfect development. So you go out with a knight and then you go out with the other knight. And then you can just go with the two bishops out like this. And you get an amazing position for this. So they are going with the two bishops out in Fianchetto, but they are running into some problems. Let's go with... Oh, can I go also with the other bishop out? I'm calculating after this the move d5, finally uh, waking up and attacking the center. That's why I will play d5, you know? I don't want to let black push here. I want to keep my advantage. Now they could play the move e5, trying to take control over the center, but at least... They are blocking their own bishop. Now they take. I'll take back with a pawn or with the knight. Maybe with the knight. Looks really powerful. Let's go. The knight here. Hee <laughs> haw. At the center of the board, I'm threatening bishop there. I'm threatening bishop here, giving the fork. I'm threatening castle. Holy boy. This is something that I love in chess. <laughs> Isn't super nice? You are trading. Ooh, you're pinning. Pinning this knight. Now I could even push there. There is still rook there, but then I castle. Guys, this is just too strong. Bing, bong. What if they try to do this? Like there. Okay, this is just too strong. E5, exploiting the pin. Huh, okay, but uh, I think I'm winning. I'll take there. If bishop takes, I'm taking back. Yep, so I want a piece. Now they take there because they don't want me to take back where the knight would be a fork. I will just take there. And I'm attacking the rook. Now they're attacking this beast, but I take you. And I'm attacking a rook. Meaning that I want a piece. Now they take back here because they don't want to lose the rook. But I have all the time in the world to go back with my bishop. And I have two nice little minor pieces. My opponent has just one, so I have plus three points. I will just castle now and trying to win this position with an extra piece. How to win when you have extra pieces? You have to. First of all, keep your pieces active. Never play passive just because you have an extra piece. If you can trade, trades are good for you. For example, now the knight is, has the possibility to take this bishop and I say, yeah, go for it. <laughs> I like it. I'm threatening this uh, discovery check. They could go here with the knight to stop it, but I would just trade, 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 trade. They take here, so I'm taking back. All the trades are good. They try to run with the, with the king back. Okay, let's activate a rook attacking a pawn. Why not? And then every time you have to improve your pieces. Once you have developed your pieces, you have to improve them. You have to make always the best out of this, uh, out of the position. Now I could take a free pawn, so I take it. But there is one piece that I really want to improve, and it's the knight. Imagine a knight going like this. That would be really good. Okay, I'll go with the queen here. My queen is so powerful, cannot be attacked anymore by a pawn, by a rook, by a queen. Cannot be attacked. It's so powerful. Attacking the square, the square, and now the knight needs to be improved. So we'll go with the knight like this. Okay, queen trade, boring, fine. But we are a queen up. Uh, not a queen up. Sorry, a piece up. So we have the advantage that any trade is basically good for us. Any equal trade. One... One danger in this position could be the background checkmate. So we might play the move h3 at some point. When we see that, that could be a problem. At the moment, honestly, that's not even a problem. There is a free pawn. We take it. <laughs> we take it. Free cheese macaroni with a check even. We are going to take also this pawn. Which could give a very nice mate. This is a collab of a knight and the rook. Let's see if we can do it. If the king moves. We take there. There we go. And now this is checkmate, guys. Okay, the rook are traded. Now there is just one move that saves black. And this to give away the rook for, for the knight. But I think they should try to give back rank mate. No! I would have loved to give a checkmate like this. Okay, fine. How do we win? Let's just bring the king. Let's just bring the king and give mate. Bing. Boom. Skaboom. Okay, let's not... <laughs> Let's not lose because our opponent is promoting. We go, we bring the king, and now 
it's okay this is fun because now we give a stalemate but the, the, our opponent can still move these pawns and this checkmate at the next move a very safe pre-move checkmate this position i had the advantage in the opening then my opponent played a terrible mistake here and from then on was never in doubt this shows the power of this pin is one of my favorite pin in chess if you enjoyed this video remember to like and subscribe check out another one and see you guys next time ciao <laughs>